In this video, I want to introduce the concept of marginal probabilities, and I'm going to do so by the use of a discrete random variable, or a couple of discrete random variables, actually. So I want to start off by talking about an example. So the example here, as I said, is going to be discrete, and we're going to think about two random variables. There's a random variable x, which takes on a value of 0 if an individual doesn't have a disease, and it takes on a value of 1 if they do have the disease. So the idea here is that the random variable x here represents the disease status of an individual, whether they have a particular disease or not. There is also another random variable, which I'm going to call here y, which takes on a value of 0 if an individual has symptoms for that disease, and it takes on a value of 1 if they don't. So just to be clear here, the random variable y here represents whether or not an individual is actually symptomatic. So y just represents whether or not that individual has symptoms. So what we can do now is we can think about there being four possible cases here for any given individual chosen at random from the population. We can think about the case in the sort of upper left of this matrix here, which is the case where an individual doesn't have symptoms for the disease and they also don't have the disease itself. And we might think that the probability of this occurring, it might be hypothetically something like 0 0.5. As I said, I haven't really specified a disease here, but I'm going to specify that to be 0 0.5. We can also think about the next entry in the top row here, which is the probability that an individual doesn't have symptoms, because we're looking at this row, and they do have the disease. So in this case, I'm going to choose this to be 0 0.1. Similarly, I'm also going to choose the probability that an individual doesn't have the disease, but they do have symptoms, so that's a false positive, if you like, to be 0 0.1 as well. Finally, because we know that probabilities have to sum to 1, we know that this last entry has to be 0 0.3, such that all of these entries together, when you sum them up, because we're talking about a probability, have to sum to 1. Okay, so already we're now talking about a probability, sort of density, or a probability mass function, which is now multivariate. There's more than one random variable, and play here. So what we can do now is we can sort of define something which we call a joint probability before we go on to discuss what is meant by a marginal probability. So the joint probability here, for example, might be what is the probability that an individual has the disease, so the probability that x is equal to 1, and the probability that they also have symptoms for that disease. And this now is what we call a joint probability. When we have this sort of comet in the middle here, that's sort of notation for a joint probability, which denotes both of these two events occurring. And this is easy enough to find. All we need to do is we need to find the rele relevant row and column, and easy enough, it's just going to be this 0 0.3 value here. So this is what we mean by an example of a joint probability. And we've already discussed the fact that because we're talking about probabilities, then the sum across all potential values of x, which I'm going to call little x, and all potential values of y, which I'm going to call little y, of the probability that you know the random variable takes on that particular value of um, its random variable value and the probability that y is equal to little y have to sum to 1 because probabilities by definition have to sum to 1. Okay that's fine now we're going to introduce the concept of what is meant by a marginal probability. Okay so what do we actually mean by a marginal probability in the first place? So an example here might be, what is the probability that an individual chosen at random actually has symptoms for the disease? So the probability that y is equal to 1. That's easy enough to find here, intuitively, right? Because all we need to do now, because there's no explicit x dependence, all we need to do is we need to consider this bottom row here. Because this, these are all the cases for which an individual has symptoms for the disease. So here, all we need to do is easy enough. We just need to sum together the value of 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3, and that gives us a probability of 0 0.4. So the probability that an individual actually has symptoms for the disease, regardless of whether they have the disease or not, is 0 0.4. And it is this sort of probability here, whereby we're talking about a probability which is multidimensional, since we've removed some of the dimensionality, this is now known as a marginal probability because we've removed any explicit x dependence. We're just saying what is the probability that an individual has symptoms for the disease. 
Similarly, we could find out easy enough what is the probability that an individual chosen from this particular population does not actually have the disease. So the probability that x is equal to zero. And again, that's easy enough to find. All we need to do is pick out here the relevant, in this case, column. And it's just going to be this, which I'm highlighting now in red. Because these are all the cases for which an individual actually doesn't have the disease itself. So again, all we need to do is we just need to sum over these particular values. So we're just going to sum over 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1 here. And that's going to give us a marginal probability of 0 0.6. Okay, so that's an example of marginal probabilities. In general, though, how do we go about deriving a marginal probability from the joint probability? Well, it's easy enough. If we want to work out the probability that, let's say, x takes on a particular value, call it little x, then all we need to do is, if you sort of think about each of these examples here, so when we thought about the example where the probability that x is equal to zero, we just have to sum over all the probabilities um, which were related to different values of the random variable y. So all we need to do is to sum over all possible y values of the joint probability that you know big X is e equal to little x and big y is equal to little y. And just by this notation, all I mean is that we're summing over here because I haven't put any x dependence here. All we're doing is we're summing over all potential values that that random variable can Take. And because we're talking about a discrete random variable, it's going to be a sum rather than an integral. And in this case, it's just going to be summing over two values. But in general, there might be you know, as many different values which a discrete random variable can take on as you want. So in summary, this is the formula which you can use to help you derive a marginal probability from a joint probability. But all a marginal probability really means is that essentially you're just saying, let's forget about one of the random variables. And let's think about the probability of one of the other random variables taking on a particular value.